A reading from our epistle text. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, for you all making my prayer with joy because of the partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began the good work in you will bring it to completion at that day of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Here we have Paul writing to the Philippians. And where is he writing from? He says in verse 7, It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in my defense and the affection of Christ Jesus. And when we think about that, and Paul writing that from prison, and we think just what that means, we can really begin to think that there's not a whole lot that this world can do to us as Christians. I mean, of course they can take our lives, they can beat us, or worse, tell us what we can and can't say, but at the end of the day, the gospel must be proclaimed. It has to be proclaimed. But I mean, we even see that in our, in our gospel text when Christ says to, to, the, to the Jews, we have, uh, he, said, he said, do not even say that we have Abraham as our father, for, our te for I tell you, John the Baptist says, God is able from these stones to rise up children of Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the tree. In other words, you can't claim your heritage. You can't claim that you are saved because Abraham was your father. Because the axe of that tree, that particular family tree, is at the stem and it shall be cut down and salvation shall belong to all of those who call upon the name of the Lord. Do not say that you are children of Abraham because the Lord could rise up the children of Abraham from rocks. He doesn't need you to be, the, to be the children of Abraham. He made you the children of Abraham. And so as Christians, we need to look at, at that in that same way. We are made Christians. And God, who has created us as Christians through, the, through holy baptism, could do the same thing through a rock. He could rise up a Christian from the rocks to proclaim the gospel, but he doesn't. He raises up Christians. He raises up pastors. He raises up the baptized. Those who have voice and who have ears. Let them speak and let them hear. And so Paul writes these words. For you are all partakers of me, with me, of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and in the confirmation of the gospel. Now, in those three things, we need to look at closely. Because we all know that anyone who has sinned is a slave to sin and therefore is imprisoned to sin. We are in bondage. Bound. We all like to speak 
of free will because it makes us feel like we have control. In fact, that's the very meaning of the term. Free will means that we can do what we want. Not that there's not consequences, but you're free to do what you want. But then I think about the valley of dry bones. And I say to the valley of dry bones, Why, what are you doing dead? Don't you know you have free will? Arise. Breathe. You have free will. Will yourself to live. Do you see where I'm going? Do we really have this free will if we are beholden to sin? We are bound. We are bound to sin. However, we also learn later that Christ breaks those bounds through His death on the cross and His resurrection. And that we are then slaves to the gospel. And that's the kind of slave that I want to be. I don't want my free will. I want the will of Christ for me. It's inevitably and ultimately better. If I had my way, and if you had your way, we would all live debauched lives. And I can prove it to you. Because sin is fun. And I know you may not hear many other preachers say that. But isn't it the truth? If it wasn't fun, why would we keep doing it so much? But it's kind of like eating candy for every meal. It might taste good, but it'll kill you. And so we go back to this. We all agree that sinning is fun, but that it'll kill you. So stop it. You have free will, right? Stop it. Stop sinning. This we cannot do. So we are in bounds. But it is the gospel. And this is, my, this is where those three terms come into play. These three terms, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. We are all in this together. We're all in this together. And I thank God for you. I thank God firstly that I do not have free will, but that I have Christ's will that lives in me and is ultimately better. And I give thanks that the same is true for you. Because whether we live or die is of no import if there is nothing inside of us. Are we just bags of meat that we, that we can claim are the sons of Abraham? Or are we washed and reborn Christians who shall live with the one who reigns forever and ever? And that's the question. And so I stand with you. Not before you or in front of you. I stand with you on the confession and the confirmation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That He died and He arose again. The victor from the dark domain. And isn't it immeasurably better to know that our free will, if we had it, is bound up 
and sealed by water and word. And that when we partake of Christ's body and blood, we can withstand anything and everything. I thank God in my remembrance of all of you, Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the last day of Jesus Christ. So even though our free will is dead and gone, and even though our, our hearts may stop, and even though we may die and we may lay in the ground, we know, we know, we know that it will come to the completion and the culmination of Jesus Christ coming back in the flesh and pointing at the sheep and saying, you are my people, and to the goats, you, you follow your master. Where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. You wanted free will. There's your free will. If you want your will bound, know that it's bound to the blood of Jesus Christ. What more do we want than that? I can't think of a thing. Amen.